Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at the SLDS linter. My name is Philippe Posiel, I'm a developer advocate at Celsius, and let's jump into it. Celsius has released a new design system called SLDS 2.0 for Celsius Line Design System. And what we're going to see today is how to use this nice tool called the linter to help you detect where you need to change CSS classes and CSS attributes to adopt the ne next generation of design system. It only requires a small number of changes, but instead of scanning manually your entire code base, you can use this convenient tool to detect issues and adjust to best practices. The tool is based on ESLint and Starlint, and I'm going to walk you through how to install it how to use it to generate report and how to fix automatically certain basic issues. All right, let's go ahead. Let's head over to the SLDS website. Under Tools, Developer Tools, you can find the linter. From this page, you can get a general overview about what the linter does and what are its key technologies. Let's head over to the developer documentation and we can see here how to set up the linter. The linter is based on Node.js. It's actually a tool that you install with NPM, the Node Package Manager. You can do this in different ways. You can either install it globally, meaning that you can install it for all of your projects once, or you can set it up at the project level. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna hop over to VS Code and we're gonna see how we can use it. In this project, I'm gonna go with a different route. Instead of installing it globally, I'm gonna install it at the project level. And to do that, I'm gonna run this first command, npm install, then the name of the uh, linter node package, and save dev to save this project as a developer dependency. I've already done this, so I'm gonna go directly in package JSON to show you this. And if I scroll down in my developer dependency, you can see here that I have my linter installed. And this means that the linter is now available as part of my project. And if people need to install my project, they will also install the linter. And the reason why I'm doing this is that instead of running the full commands for the linter, I want to be able to set up shortcuts like I did here. So if I type in npm run lint sldS, this will trigger this uh, sldS linter lint command. I also prepared another command for fixing automatic issues and for generating reports. We're going to be using those scripts that I wrote as a shortcut instead of typing the full SLDS commands. If you install the linter globally, you'll want to run those commands which are the official ones instead of writing SLDS lint. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. In this sample project, we have a custom landing web component here, which has a number of issues. So for example, if I open the HTML of my component, we're gonna see some warnings here. The visual warnings are not coming from the linter, they are coming from the SLDS validator uh, VS Code extension. So if I highlight one of these, you're gonna see some recommendations. Now, what we want to do in this project is to run the validation with uh, the linter. So I'm going to go in the, the command line here. I'm going to type my first command. I'm going to run the lint command. And remember, this is a node script that we've wrote to the numerically called the linter. So by doing this, uh, it's going to analyze my source code and it's going to generate a list of recommendations. It can detect errors and warnings. In this sample product, we have 52 warnings. We can take a look at these warnings here in the command line, but it's not super convenient. So instead of doing this, we're going to use a second command here and we're going to generate the report. The report here that is going to be generated is using the serif format. And in my visual code setup here, I have installed a serif viewer. So when I click on the generate report here, I'm going to have a convenient user interface that will list my warnings. The warnings are going to be grouped first by location. So here, for example, if I open uh, this first one here, I'm going to be able to pinpoint directly the location of the warning. And I'm going to get the full detail of the recommendations and the logs for the specific error. Not only can we view uh, the errors by location, but we can also view the error group by rule. So we can take a look at specific um, types of rule which were um, generating the warnings and we can take a look at the full logs if we want to see the detail of the logs. Now, having the free port format is very convenient because not only can you work to browse issues yourself, but you can also exchange it and share it with others. So this can be a good starting point if you want to assess the effort 
to do a migration for the entire project. Now, lastly, we saw that our product has a number of issues. If I reopen my console, you see here we have 52 warnings. So I could go ahead and fix those uh, warnings myself manually, but we have a last command that I want to show you today, which is called a fix. So I'm going to run npm lint slds fix to automatically fix the most basic, basic issues. And now we can see we're down to 35 issues. The fixer will take care of the obvious issues and it will solve them for you. So it's already a good uh, way to save time. And then you can generate another report and fix those last remaining issues. That's how you can use the linter to save a lot of time to migrate to SLDS 2.0. And that's it. In this video, we saw how to use the SLDS linter, how to generate reports of common issues, and how to automatically fix some of those issues. I hope you've learned something today. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and to like it. Good luck with your SLDS 2.0 transition. And thanks for watching.